Hello and welcome again to HackerBox's headquarters. Today we're going to have a look at HackerBox number 0036, the uh, Jumbotron themed HackerBox. Alright, so right off the bat we have an um, indicator to the box guide at HackerBoxes.com. Be sure to check that out. And the star of this box is a 32 by 64 pixel RGB pixel matrix. And these are the same types of panels that are used um, in a large array to make large uh, video displays such as jumbotrons. Uh, it has a uh, nice digital interface and a big hefty power supply input. Um, also in the box we have a power supply cable that um, needs 5 volts. A little bit of uh, detail in the guide about how to hook that up and that clips right onto the, the panel. And then we have a nice um, ESP32 development board for driving this, um, controlling the uh, LED um, array there, and a game controller module for that can also be interfaced to the onto the um, ESP32 module. So we have a basically a c computer module that can drive the um, LED matrix and then a controller with both the XY joystick and also a Z click and four buttons that can be used as input to the the um, ESP32 module. Uh, we have a lot of uh, female female jumper uh, wires that can be used to interface between the controller and the display on these two headers and then also between the controller and the um, uh, joystick controller. Right. And then some nice swag items. We have a cool um, hacker glider uh, koozie to put your drink in. Nice delicious beverage uh, with a hacker box is a name on it and um, also have a fun fan art decal. A little bit of a retro gaming fan art decal. Alright, and to wire um, all these items up, we have the uh, ESP32 that has um, several inputs dedicated to this uh, joystick controller and then um, it, the, uh, there are some outputs from this ESP32 wired to the um, 64x32 LED matrix. And then there's a 5 volt power supply coming in that provides the um, kind of a higher current to this display but then also has a 5 volt tapped off going to the VN on the um, uh, ESP32 controller. There's a, a obviously wiring information on all of this on the, the box guide to check out, but let's uh, power it up. And this little demo program is uh, available on the box guide and it has four different modes. So one mode just shows how to draw some text onto the the array. Um, this one just shows some random snow. Um, this mode draws some random lines. It's very re reminiscent of a lot of programs we used to write on the Commodores and Apple IIs way back in the 80s. And, uh, and then in this mode, you can move a little set of four pixels around using the joystick. And then when you press the joystick down, it, the pixels turn red. And um, uh, so definitely load up that sample program. Um, it uses a, a pretty simple library for writing out to the uh, pixel, uh, the uh, LED array. And um, and then look through the code and just try to get a feeling for how the um, the controller is read. Uh, the uh, X and Y um, are actually little potentiometers, so they're analog values. They're done done with the uh, analog read. And then the um, these four buttons and the Z button on the uh, joystick are 
are just uh, digital inputs. And then you can also see how the uh, library is accessed for the, the um, LED matrix to draw individual pixels or lines or to output text. So, um, check out that, that sample video. And after you have a look at that, there are some uh, other examples that other people have done with these panels. Uh, some people have done various games, alarm clock, weather stations, things like that. I mean, obviously with this type of a big display, there's a lot of different things you can do um, that might be useful, um, you know, internet clock, internet radio display, and things like that. So that should be pretty, um, pretty fun to play with. Uh, hope you enjoy that and hope you um, are able to maybe uh, share some of your um, code or uh, examples that you're able to do. We'll add them to the box guide if you'd, uh, if you'd like. Just uh, shoot us a message and let us know. So as far as um, how to wire up the, um, the buttons on the uh, game controller, the joystick controller, uh, this is um, an issue that has come up a few times and, and um, we've gotten a, a few questions over, over the years about it, so we wanted to just review it real quick. Um, it's, a, it's one of these things that's really simple but then also kind of confusing. Uh, if you look at the uh, image that we're sharing here, you can see that we have two different scenarios with a momentary button, which is um, you know, the, what the buttons that we're using on the controller are momentary buttons. When you push them down, they close. When you let them up, they open. And so um, looking under, uh, the, under ver the version A, you can see that this circuit has a pull-up resistor, um, meaning it's pulled up to the, uh, the voltage rail, which um, in this case is 3.3 volts. And, uh, and then that, the other side of that resistor goes directly to the input, the I.O. input. So that, when the button is left open, the resistor is pulling that, the, the, that input up, so the input is seeing a one, a, a logic one. And then when the button is closed, um, the button at basically attaches the input on the uh, processor, it attaches that input to ground, which will overcome the resistor, because the resistor is a fairly large resistor, meaning it's easy to overcome with a short circuit. So we short that input to ground and then the processor sees a logic low. So when you read the input using, let's say, you know, a digital read in, our, in, the, um, our, in an Arduino um, program, you will see a zero or you know, a false or a low when the button is depressed or in a one when it's left up because the pull-up resistor pulls it up. So the opposite is true in image B. We have a resistor that's always pulling the output down when the button is open, so that's the normal state, the button's not conducting, it's open, and the resistor's pulling it down, so we read a zero. And then when we close the button, it pulls it up, and since that's a short circuit, or zero ohms effectively, that overcomes the large resistor, and the input will see a, a logic one, because it's being, it's being attached, it's being short circuited to ground when that button is depressed. So this um, pull up and pull down versions these are you know, relatively easy to just set up. If you, if you want to just make a, um, a digital read, you can set these up using a button and a resistor, obviously, and you either attach a resistor to ground or to the, the um, VCC, the voltage rail. Um, <clears throat> and, and then you put you know, the, the input on one side of the resistor and the pull up or pull down rail on the other side, and then the button basically shorts to the other rail off of the input. So, you know, just, just like we've shown here. So. The interesting thing with this is that a lot of um, processors have on their um, microcontrollers and such have on their uh, various inputs, they have um, built-in pull-up or pull-down resistors. And so you have to check what's available. So on the um, AT Megas, which are the processors that are used on the Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano, there are, there are um, pull-ups. On the um, ESP32, several of the uh, IOs have pull-ups or pull-downs, and you select them when you do the pin mode, uh, call the pin mode function. You give the pin number, and then you can say input pull-up or input pull-down. But on the original Arduinos with the uh, AT Mega processors, you can only pull up. But when you put that on, then the resistor part of the circuit, the pull-up resistor, or in the case of the ESP32, you can use a pull-down resistor, as shown in image B, the pull up or pull down is, is actually put inside the chip and that the only external component you need is the button. So for example, on this game controller, there are no pull up, pull down resistors. So you have to use the ones inside the uh, microcontroller and then the buttons are the only external component. So if you look at the code, you'll see that the pin mode in the setup block in the, um, in the demo code for, the, uh, for this box, you'll see that the, the, um, 
there's a uh, again in the in the setup uh, function loop there's a setup function call there's a um, pin mode for each of the K1 through K4 and then uh, the Z button and they all have the pin mode set to input pull pull up which as shown in, uh, in image A so that the resistor is actually used inside the chip and then the only external component is the actual button on the little red game controller so um, hopefully that uh, adds a little bit of clarity to how how these buttons work even though there isn't a resistor the resistor is just inside the chip, but we have to tell the, the chip to turn it on, okay? So uh, we've done this on a, a few other boards, but you know, when you're doing it your, your own, you're just breadboarding something up, you can just use an external resistor. And of course, the nice thing about that is you can pick the value. Sometimes you want a, a slightly smaller resistor. So like instead of a 10 or 50K, you might want a 1K resistor. It'll give you, it'll make it so that, you know, it's a little more rock solid. But of course, that also means when you press the button and you have that resistor basically nailed between the plus and minus, or the ground and plus voltage, you're you're uh, you're burning a little more current through there. So it's uh, you, but you're in control of the trade-offs when you use your own external resistor. So definitely uh, think about that a little bit and play around with it. It's a it's a good thing to understand. It'll make um, working with some uh, some circuits that might be a little more complicated uh, that have uh, biasing resistors for uh, biasing transistors or stuff. It'll make that make a little more sense uh, if you work through this and understand this. So. Um, that's what we have for this box. Um, hopefully, uh, you can get some good use out of uh, HackerBox number 0036 Jumbotron. Okay, thanks for being with us today and following along with our projects and what we're working on. If you want to receive some things like this, some cool electronics discovery every month, or look at any of our other projects, head on over to HackerBoxes.com and have a look at our monthly subscription offering and the other kits that we have available. Also, remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks a bunch.